part of what makes this question difficult is that so much is abstract here, right? It's like, there's a K, who knows what it is? There's an N, who knows what it is, okay? So there's just stuff to try and make this harder and more abstract and more conceptual for you, okay? But what they actually ask you for is not that hard, right? There's gonna be an X cubed term in here, and there's gonna be an X squared term in there, and they'll both have coefficients, right? For example, um, if we did a question like, just simple one like this, right? Or no, let's put a number in there. Let's put a five. two in there. Oh, yeah, Marie five. That would have been that would have been a smart thing to do. Okay, now if I do this, right? Let's just quickly expand this out, right? I've got my one at the front, and my coefficients are going to be one, three, three, one. You okay with that? Okay. So I'm just going to actually write the one, three, three, one to start with. Okay. For the first term, what else do I have hanging around the coefficient? I, well, yeah, nothing. I mean, I don't have nothing. I have one cubed, but that's, that's nothing, isn't it, right? When you have a look at this guy, right, I have one less one, but I've got a 2x. Do you see that? I've got a 2x in there. Are you happy with that? Here I'm going to get two of them, and then here I'm going to get, oops, there's a two, uh, three of them. You okay with that? Now, I could just quickly expand this. I can expand this, and it'll be 1 plus 6x plus, help me out, 12. 3 times 4, 12. 12x squared plus, yeah, yeah, 8x, 8x cubed. Okay, so I could say, for instance, I could craft out of this question, I could say um, the coefficient of x squared is double the coefficient of x. That, that's all they really mean. They're just talking about these two numbers, okay? But they're just trying to weird you out a little bit and intimidate you because things here are unknown, okay? But I'm going to approach this question just like I'd approach this one. They're just things I don't know what their values are, okay? So I'm going to start expanding this guy out, okay? Let's do this. When I start to expand this out, because I don't know how many terms there are, right? I actually don't know what these 1, 3, 3, and one are. They could be one, four, six, four, one, or one, five, ten, ten, five, one, etc. So being that I don't know what the actual numbers will be, what notation can I use to help me out? Sigma. I could use I could use sigma notation to add up the whole series, right? But I actually want to tease out the parts. I want to know what they are separately. So I'm going to use this notation, right? This is my shorthand way of writing for some power which term I want. So the first term, the first term, is just going to have an n to zero on it. Yes. Bless you. Okay. Just like before, right? I'm going to have a one term. You see that? How many of them will I have? N. Of n of them, right? Nothing dramatic. Okay. When I go over to the next term, I'm going to have n choose one, whatever that might be, and I'm going to have, I'm going to have some ones. I'm going to have one less of them. Ah, but now I get this guy is starting to come in, right? X on K. Okay, how many of them? One. one. Just the one. Okay. How far do I need to go? I need to get to, whoop, here it is. I need to get to the X squared term and the X cubed term. And then I can stop. I mean, it goes on for N, but I don't know how many that is. Okay. So now I'm going to get up to this guy, N choose two. How many ones will I have? N minus two. N minus 2. Uh, you're probably like, why, do you, why does he keep writing the 1s? Because just as easily, this number could have been something else. And then you need them in, right? So I'm just trying to pay you for the more complicated ones. How many X on Ks will I have? 2. two. I'm just following the pattern, right? Okay, aha, there's my X squared term. That's really good. And I only need to go one more, right? I'm going to get N, choose 3, 1, N minus 3, X minus K cubed. It's a messy X. You happy with that? Okay, now, this is not actually what it's equal to. There are more terms, but I don't need any of the other terms, do I? Because I'm going to get next to the 4, next to the 5, all the way up until, what would the very last term be? Just for the sake of interest. N choose N. We N choose N, which will always be 1. That's the last one. Okay. How many 1s will I have at this point? Zero. I'll have none left, and then I'll have this guy just hanging on the end. Right, just like I had Three of them here, I have n of them there. Okay? This question doesn't require that, but later questions might. Okay? So this is the whole thing. I've got it all in, in here. Alright, now I'll refer to what the question tells me about the relationships of these coefficients, right? So here is the coefficient of x squared. 
though it actually does include this guy as well. And here is the coefficient of x cubed, and it includes that guy. Are you okay with that? So I'm going to take this line here directly. <coughs> Sorry. Ways not to set out your solutions, okay? I'm going to take that guy, and I'm going to write him out with what I know about the coefficient of x cubed and the coefficient of x squared. Let's do the coefficient of x cubed. I've got and choose three. I guess I'll stop writing the ones now, since I know what they do. I've got the x cubed there, but I also have this guy hanging around here, right? How many of them do I have? I have three of them as well, right? So that's one over k cubed. You okay with that? Next, coefficient of x squared. Two times the coefficient of x squared, so I'll stick a two there. Then I start writing my coefficient. N, two. 1 on k squared. Okay, take a breath, right? This was hard to get to, right? This is an important step, there's a mark here, right? When you look at this, and you look at what you're required to prove, do I look like I'm on the right track? No. Hmm. Yeah. But you are. But I, I, need, I need a relationship between n's and k's. Do I have n's and k's in this line? Yes. I do. Is there any other stuff there that I need to get rid of? No. Well, there's just some numerical algebraic rearranging that I have to do. That's all I really need. This is promising. Okay. So this is me mentally checking that I'm on the right track. Okay. Now, before I start to unpack it, what can you do with this? Right. Go way, way, way back and remember what these n's are, these brackets, what they actually refer to. It refers to all this factorial business, right? That's the only thing I can really do here, okay? Apart from these k's, I can do some cancelling, right? So how would you expand this? I'll give you a minute. Write out the next line. It'll take you some time. Think carefully about it. There's my definition, okay? Off you go. Oh, yeah, sure. Wait, is that it? No. There's a there's a there's a prime test that's so awesome! Wow! Wait, which button did you? Is it what a fact button? That's awesome. That's great. If it, if it has to simplify like that. one times ten to the ten, it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> it just it, it just explodes. Math error. Math error. It has to. Um, Okay, should we have a go at it? So I've put my next line down, right? All I've really done is I have evaluated what this NC3 notation, NC2 notation means in terms of factorials. Okay. And then I've just got these guys, I've brought them out to play. And you can see this is like cancelling heaven. Watch this, okay? These are both products, right? <laughs> I've got an n factorial there and an n factorial there, right? So they just disappear. Go on, go on. You okay with that? Yeah? You see what I'm doing here? I've got, what else have I got? I've got a 3 factorial there and a 2 factorial there, right? So this is 3 times 2 times 1. And this is 2 times 1. So what am I going to get left with? 3. I'm going to get rid of that and the factorial disappears. Now the reason why that's awesome is so I can play exactly the same trick with this n minus 2 factorial and the n minus 3 factorial. Be careful. Which number is bigger? This one or this one? This one would be bigger, right? Because say n were 100. Say this was to the power of 100, right? This is going to be 98 factorial, and that'll be 97 factorial. So this is clearly bigger, right? This term will have every single one of these terms in it, plus one more. Namely, 
and minus 2. Right. So this guy completely disappears and this factorial goes. Okay. I can keep going, right? This k squared over here and this k cubed over here, what shall I cancel and what are we left? K. Cancel the k squared and what are we left over here? K. Okay. By the way, I can do that. Why can I do that? Because k is not zero, at least it better not be. Otherwise, just flip the table and go home. Okay? So k is not zero, so therefore I can get rid of it. All right, we have to. <laughs> if only so. All right, now. It's like, that'll be an interesting supervision. Okay, now I've cancelled so very much. Okay? So what do I have left? Over on the left hand side. It looks to me like I've got one on 3k. Okay, you satisfied with that? On the right. I've got a 2 on the top, n minus two. and I've got n minus 2 on the bottom. Does this look like I'm going in the right direction? Yeah. It sure does. Like, check that 6k out, right? 6k equals n minus 2, because I cross multiplied, so just rearrange. Yay! Now then. 